Hi, my name's Laura Bartlett from Urban Coco magazine. I'm here today to ask for £100,000 for a 15% share in my business. It's something that I launched in June 2010. It started online as a, an online magazine and just a hobby really to, to write about fashion and events initially in Leeds, but then started getting interest from all over the country and covering events in fashion in London and Manchester. Um, to the point where in January last year I decided to quit my full-time job and turn my hobby into a business. So I decided to move from online into print. So from the, later on this month the magazine will be available on newsstands in 20 different countries. And I'm here today to ask for the investment to help me turn my one-woman publishing machine into a fully running company that's not just run by me. Happy to answer any questions that you might have. A model pitch from 26-year-old Laura Bartlett, who's looking for £100,000 for a 15% stake in her fashion magazine, Urban Coco. Piers Linney is the first to question the fashionista entrepreneur. Hi, I'm Piers. Why are you going from online to offline, where the whole industry is going in the opposite direction? If less people are doing it, then you've got more chance of standing out. Like I say, it started in Leeds, so there weren't any other magazines in Leeds, so I thought that by moving into print and being the only fashion magazine in the city, um, it'd be able to kind of raise a profile of the brand. And also, with the whole blogging community and blogging becoming such a massive thing, it was kind of hard to stand out online. So that's the main reason why I decided to move into print. It didn't really work online, did it? It did work online, yes, until I, I think blogging kind of got so big. Tell me what it worked meant. Um, it worked that I was generating revenue from online advertisers and also getting quite a lot of hits and so, followers. So again, what, that's what I'm after. I'm after yeah. the successes on the online site and the indicators that said actually this will work better. Yeah, so I already had so many followers and fans that I knew that if I moved into print... How many? ..it'd be um, 8,000 unique visitors a month. OK, so 8,000 unique visitors a month. Does that sound like a lot to you? Um, yeah. Somewhat. The £100,000, what are you going to spend it on? Um, to take on a full-time salesperson, so there's someone dedicated to sales. A salesperson is how much? Um, £18,000. Yeah. Um, a salary for myself, um, £25,000. Yeah. £65,000 on marketing. Um, the graphic design, which is £20,000. But Well, that's more than... 100. Then that's it. Well, no, that's, that's more than 100. <laughs> yeah, um, the, the graphic designer isn't £20,000, it's £13,500. It was um, £1,000. Do, do you want to do that pay. again, then? Should we... Because should, okay. the, the question was, start with 100000 Yes. How are you going to spend it? 20, 25000 on a salary for myself. Yeah. 65 on marketing. Yeah. No, 50000 on marketing. Um... Yeah, and the graphic designer and the full-time salesperson. Oh, you do know it's beginning to sound like you're just plucking those numbers out of the I'm way, really not, you? though. It's just kind of gone through them so many okay, times. OK, well, I assume now. you're not just plucking those numbers out of the air. But my worry is that the number that's reduced, which I thought was undershooting it heavily anyway, yeah. marketing for £50,000 when you're going to be marketing in 20 different countries? Yeah. Does that sound like that's going to... Even dent? Um, yeah, I think it would. Really? Yeah. Laura's laissez-faire attitude to her costs is confusing the dragons. But Peter Jones, who has himself invested in a magazine, has altogether different concerns. Have you heard of Wonderland magazine? I have. It's fabulous. And when you first walked in and I saw these being held by the models on the front cover, my heart started to race a little bit. And it started to race not because of the models that were holding this, but because of the fact that I was concerned that this could enter the market and be a competing product to Wonderland magazine. Yeah. But the minute I got it in my hand, I breathed a massive sigh of relief. It's substandard quality. The content is just appalling. I'd expect better or more from a student as whilst I'm happy 
because you will never ever compete with something of which I own, I would suggest that you have a reality check, go back to the drawing board and make this a hundred times more impressive than what it is today. Okay. And for that reason, sadly, Laura, I'm out. Appreciate your honesty, thank you. A brutal assessment by Peter Jones. Will Kelly Hoppen, who has a good working knowledge of the glossy magazine sector, be any more sympathetic? I can see you're passionate um, and the way you presented yourself and the way you came into the den. And it's always quite heartbreaking for me because I think the passion is part of what drives a business and, and what you do. But I think that it's a lot of money, £100,000, to put in. You're going to swallow that up in five minutes. Um, I think that you need to relook at the magazine um, to have it more lifestyle. So that's interiors, fashion, food, health, everything that people are interested in. Um, but it's, it's not a business that I would invest in, so for that reason I'm out, but good no, luck. Nice. Thank you. I think what you have here really, in many ways, is a potential college project piece. And I don't want to be unfair, but I think that, that's how I view this. I think you're, you, know, you are going against the flow in a global industry and you are competing with some very serious brands, but I just don't think you're going to be able to make any noise with this at all in, in the industry you're up against. So I wouldn't invest in this, um, I'm afraid. No worries. So I'm out. Thank you. Um, just because, it, you know, this is such a difficult industry and you put a valuation on this of almost £700,000, you know, I, I really can't invest £100,000 in it. I'm out. Cheers. Four dragons out. Only Deborah Meaden remains. Do you know, I am delighted you've come to the den today. Thanks. It's not because... I'm afraid I'll be investing, because I won't, but I'm delighted because you came early enough to get that advice yeah. and hopefully stop you making those mistakes so that you can use that spark of ambition elsewhere. But I agree, you know, it's everybody else is going the other way for a reason. Yeah. It's not great. And valuation crazy. So no reason at all. You've given me no reason to invest, yeah. so I'm afraid I'm out. Thank you. A tearful Laura has failed to convince the dragons that her fashion magazine has legs. She leaves the den empty-handed. Heartbreaking, isn't it? Thinking about what the dragons said, I don't think they were wrong. I just think that was their opinion and I'm not going to change anything I was doing. So I'm just going to continue down the path that I was going and, and try and prove them all wrong.